Hello and welcome to this lab session. In this lesson, we will look at how to create an Azure Blob Storage in your Azure Storage. So we will create a storage account. In there, we will be creating a container and in there, we will upload our files. Before we begin, let me tell you about the Azure Blob Storage. Azure Blob Storage is Microsoft's object storage solution for the cloud. Blob storage is basically optimized for storing massive amounts of unstructured data. Users or client applications can access objects in Blob storage via HTTP or HTTPS from anywhere in the world. Objects in Blob storage are accessible via the Azure Storage, REST API, Azure PowerShell, Azure CLI, or an Azure Storage Client Library. Let's begin. Here you can see that we have the storage accounts option. Click on this option. And here we will first go to create a storage account. So click on this. Basically what happens is when you create a storage account, then you have the containers and blob inside that. This is basically for using your data among the different resources inside the Azure itself. The first thing we have here is to select the subscription under the basic option. The first option we have is for the subscription selection. As we have already discussed, currently we have a free subscription on our free account. So we will select this as your subscription one as of now. And then we have the resource group option. As of now, we haven't created any. So basically a resource group is a group where you have multiple resources inside it. Let's create a new group over here. And I will name it as as your resource group and click on it. Next, we have to give the storage name. This should be unique because inside Azure multiple accounts cannot have the same storage name. So because the storage is mainly managed through the account details itself, I will name it as my blob storage 155. And then you need to select the region where the storage will be managed. So you have all these options for the region selection. You can select any one of them depending on the location nearest to you. I would prefer going with the US East uh, option. And then there is an option for the performance type. We have standard and the premium option. And I will stick with the standard option. The redundancy option will be the geo redundant storage for us. There are other options as well. So you have the locally redundant option, which is actually the lowest cost option that provides you the basic protection against the server rack and drive failures. Then we have an option for geo redundant storage, the zero redundant storage, and then a geo zone redundant storage. Let's select the option as discussed and then we will move to next advanced options. These are some advanced options. We will keep them as defaults and move on next. Over here, we have the networking option. Here we have the connectivity method as public endpoint, which allows all the networks to access this storage. Then there is an option for public endpoint for selected networks and then the private endpoint. So if you use this private endpoint option, you are not providing any public access for anyone to access this storage. Whatever files you have kept will not be shared with anyone. And if you go with the, this public endpoint with selected networks, you then have to provide the virtual networks that can access it. And we haven't defined any as of now. So we will go with the public endpoint option, allowing all network access. And in this case, all of your Azure, Azure services have the access to this storage where required. Moving on forward, you have the network routing options. I will select the Microsoft routing. Next, I will keep all of these as default and won't be making any changes to it. Click on next. Then there is the tag option. And if you want to assign any tag and give the value for your storage, 
so that you can differentiate among multiple storage accounts when you have them. All right, moving on to the next option to review and create our storage. It will validate and enable the create option for us. And here it is. Let's create it. It will take a couple of minutes to create the storage for us and deploy it as a resource to our account so that it can be used. It is submitting the deployment as of now and the deployment is in progress. Once it is available, it will show the status. All right, the storage uh, is now deployed and it says the deployment is complete. It is also here in the notification area as well. Let me close this. So the deployment is complete. The blob storage name is this. This is the start time when created. The subscription name is here that is used to actually build the charges for this storage. And the resource group in which the service is contained is the Azure resource group. These are all the basic settings for this storage. Let's move to this resource now. Here we are in the My Blob Storage 155 dashboard. And it shows you the location for this storage where it is contained. And this is the one we selected at the time of creating the storage account. Then there is the secondary location where the redundancy backups will be made or in case the actual storage location is not available, this will be used instead. This subscription we already discussed, you can change it as well. If you have multiple subscriptions, you can switch to the other one to change the billing methods and other management stuff. Then you have the subscription ID, the disk state and all that information. And below here are the properties for this blob storage account. So let's move on to creating the container to upload some files. So in the left side panel, you will find the container option. Select this container option. You can see that we don't have any containers in the storage account as of now. A container organizes a set of blobs similar to a directory in a file system. A storage account can include an unlimited numbers of containers and a container can store an unlimited number of blobs. Click on this button here to create a new container. Then we will give a name for this container. Let's name it as my first container. All right, so the tick mark shows that this name is available for us. Then there is the option for the public access level, like whatever access level you want to provide to this container. And there are these three options. First, we have the private access level. In this, no one can access anonymously. Then there is the blob access level, where anonymous read access for only the blobs are allowed. And finally, there is the option for the container level access, where the anonymous access for reading the containers and blob is granted. So we will go with the container level public access option. And we will create this container. So our container has been created successfully. And let's move inside the container dashboard so that we can upload some of the files that can be used for some Azure services. So here is our dashboard for this container where you can see the access control. You have the diagnose and solve problem tab here and other settings as well. Let me show you the access control option over here. Click on view my access to have a look at your access this container has. It's loading. And here it shows that you have the owner role level. Access grants you the full access to manage all the resources. Let me go back here to the overview tab. And now I will be uploading my files using this upload button. Click on this upload button over here and it pops up a window and asks you to browse and locate the file. Let's browse for the file in my local PC. I have this dataset folder and in there I will upload one of these files, the sales record 100 which contains 100 sales record dataset. Select this file and click on the open button. And then click on the upload button here to upload this file. 
So the upload begins and the file is uploaded. So this is how you create a storage account, create containers and upload files inside it, giving it the network access with the help of the public endpoints so that it can be used by any Azure service. So here we have the file uploaded and we will be using it in our future lab sessions to copy the dataset to the SQL database and then perform some queries over it. 